Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast, Mike Sorg here in the studios in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to talk tech and get geeky with it. Um, with us this week, we got in studio once again, both the Dudders and the Chilla. Ta-da! At K Dudders on the Twitter, Woo! at Chilla on <laughs> Twitter as well, as I adjust my volume, I think I was coming a little too hot there. Um, how you guys doing? Not too bad. How are you? Welcome back. Yeah, I know. Did you hey, miss comfy me? Comfy couch. I did miss. <laughs> I know. We're all oh, hi. How are you? <laughs> awesome. And then we also have on the line a special guest this week. Just recently featured in Next Pittsburgh is your Jagoff, John Chamberlain, joining us. How you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you guys? All right. So yeah, you just got featured. Of course, we know you from that awesome blog, yajagoff.com, and the <laughs> Twitter account and all that stuff. But uh, you got featured in a pretty cool article. Yeah, it was really nice, actually. Uh, Nadine from Next Pittsburgh uh, wrote an article on, I think it's nine bloggers in Pittsburgh. And, uh, yeah, and um, it was cool. I got I got a mention in there. It was nice. She, she said I was a nice guy, so I copied that and printed that out for my parents and my kids <laughs> so that they understand I'm a nice guy sometimes. And, uh, yeah, so probably the best picture I've ever taken since my senior picture in high school. So that's good. <laughs> Nice, nice, great timing uh, to have you on this week, of course, with that. But uh, we'll have you on. We'll talk tech. We'll talk geek. Maybe we'll get some blogging talk. I don't know. And see what's going on uh, with you. Uh, and of course, this is your Awesome Cast, guys. You can check us out at uh, awesomecast.com. We're also online, live.sogatronmedia.com, every Tuesday around about 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You can join us there in the awesome chat room. Uh, you can also hook us up. We're, uh, like I said, at, at Awesome Cast on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're on Google+. Plus. And you guys can continue and comment on some of the stories that we've talked about. You can also drop us a line to uh, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. We're also available on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, and I believe we just got approved for iHeartRadio. So uh, look for us on that app as well. Yes! Wow. Then, they, then they rejected the other new podcast. Yay! <laughs> what, no, 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 no. It, it, cause that one I left tracks on because they're like the playlists are automatically something something tracks when you go to Spreaker. Mm-hmm. I left it on. And that's the only reason they disqualify me. So I just oh. deleted, resubmitted, and I'll wait another month. Um, so, that's, so there you go. That's how Spreaker works. Um, so and, and here's a tip. I got this email because I was, I was messing with SoundCloud. Apparently, they, they upped uh, how much audio you can put on SoundCloud. So those looking to podcast over there or do anything else audio, um, I think they doubled the free space. So, mm. so you can check that out. Um, and like I said, Jagoff is with us, so let's get started with our awesome things of the week. Uh, John, I hope you have one. Uh, we'll come to you last if you don't, so you can take a minute to come up with one, all right? That sounds good. It's like ordering at a restaurant. I'll, I'll go last. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's go, uh, Katie, what do you got? Oh, I got fireworks. You got fireworks. <laughs> I have fireworks. Um, crazy internet friend here. Um, oh, I just blanked out on his name. Uh, he's, he also be, be, built the Wolverine claws, and um, but he decided to build himself a suit so he could see what it was like to be inside of a um, fireworks display. I love this gif. I've been watching this for like 10 minutes. Yeah, that's just, yeah, the, the gif is amazing. It, it's this massive metal monster, it looks like, with these eyes. and um, But he actually takes it and he there's video from inside the suit there's video from outside the suit he's got bottle rockets attached to him his friends are shooting fireworks at him which is pretty amazing that's amazing it looks like <laughs> it, lo- it looks like the original iron man from the first movie i, I wonder is there Colin is there like a time limit that he can be in the midst of the fireworks before the thing heats up to the point of heat not necessarily that the suit melts but he starts to heat up to a point of burning himself like how is the internal inside of the suit cold like how does it work i don't think it's cold from the looks of it Mm-mm. looking at the inside of so, the suit. so he could heat up and melt but the suit's gonna be okay well you said there was yeah. like a time limit right yeah there's yeah. only a certain amount of time he can be in there uh colin furs is his name colin uh Firth? Fur- furs 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 
He actually made a fully functioning Wolverine claws at one point. So this guy's nuts. He's amazing. But yeah, he, he wanted to be inside and see what it was like to be inside of a firework display. That looks awesome. It's insane. The video is just awesome. And if you know anybody who does Roman candle fights, you really need to tell them to step up their game at this point. He should take this to like carnivals and allow people to to go inside the suit and be in the fireworks. Space. That'd be a hell of a liability. <laughs> Maybe I mean, it's the could... next ice bucket challenge. Yes. <laughs> the firework challenge. The firework challenge. I mean, I would pay and sign a disclaimer to be in there. Or a waiver. I guess it wouldn't be a disclaimer. A waiver. I think it would definitely be worth it. That, he's looking like him right in that picture. <laughs> Go back like 15, 20 frames. He looks like he's taking some sparks on the inside of that suit. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. This could be the next big thing. Firework suits. Hey, you can check that out. Uh, the article's over at uh, techcrunch.com. Awesome. Uh, Chilla, what do you got? So I got um, TiVo, which I'm a huge fan of the TiVo, if you've watched any of the prior episodes. TiVo actually launched their first box, and it's meant only for cord cutters. So their, their, typical, their typical box is about $200. This box comes in at a $50 price tag. It'll be available at Best Buy shortly. Um, it has the um, typical four tuners, and it's all over the air. So if you're a person that, that's using over the air now, you do have to pay for TiVo's um, uh, online, oh, what's it called, guide system. So obviously you get all of your TV shows mm -hmm. um, appropriately. Um to me, like this is a huge win for cable cutters because one of the first things that I had problems with when I did cut the cord was DVR. So their their service obviously allows you. This gives you four tuners, 500 gigs of storage, integrated Wi-Fi, um, and the majority of the same software and accessories as the as the the normal TiVos. Obviously, it doesn't have the cable card capability that the other TiVos have. But for the $150 price cut on the device... <laughs> so so cable <laughs> cards are $150 to implement? Is that's, that's my question. Like, why, why could they do this so cheap by merely eliminating the cable card port? And they don't have a tuner built in. Like, you still have to attach it to an antenna and everything, right? You have, so it has four tuners built oh, in. Has, wow. It has four digital tuners. All you have to do is hook up one antenna... It will split the antenna four ways. You can record up to four channels at the same time. I mean, I to me, the, the TiVo box is what allowed me to cut the cord. Mm. Like I said, when I did it, and I think that I'm now, I had this arc of I was, I wanted to be on the brink of a, a large number of pay channel um, shows. And I'm starting to wean myself off those shows. Those shows are actually coming to an end. We're, we're, I'm seeing um, series finales, not just season finales. So I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have that arc. I'll, I'm not gonna try to watch any more. New, I'm not picking up any new series that are on pay, mm -hmm. pay cable. And I'm gonna go back to the cord cut. And I'd put, put more than one of these around the house. Um, I do have a TiVo um, mini in one of our rooms already. To extend the device. Um, See, now I'm looking at this, and and for me, for my situation, like this would replace Hulu Plus. So it would, re but you wouldn't get so Hulu Plus. Don't they have like USA? Well, you, not really. Some other not really. Okay. Like USA, you still have to go in browser, so you're really not losing anything. Okay. Um, some things, even though you pay for Hulu Plus, some things are still not allowed on Hulu Plus, like <laughs> USA. I know okay. they don't. They don't have an across the board license with everybody, basically. So just so you know, TiVo does have a Hulu Plus, a Netflix, an oh. Amazon Prime. So they I have, have all the yet, clients. So I have yet another box that does these things. You have another box that does the things, but it's your DVR for all your over the air. True. So let's just say on a Monday night you watch something that's on ABC and something the same time that's on NBC and something the same time on CBS. You could be recording. That you can actually take probably all the major, your your two, four, eleven, and fifty-three. You could record all four of those channels during prime time every night. 
and not have and fast forward through your commercials. Okay. You'd have a Netflix client, so you could pick up your Netflix shows. But then I feel like I feel like for the fifteen dollars a month, all the shows that are already over the air are on my Hulu. But what are you? So you, but you already have a box to do this. Yeah, kind of. So, so most people, a lot of people, probably don't, or they're you sh- gotta using really an Xbox. You got to really like over the air, or you have to be in a in a market where you have a lot of over the air stuff. Even the extra over the air stuff, like, what am I gonna am I gonna re- record? Rick Seebeck specials or something. Well, I that's was, the only thing that it feels worthwhile to me. So I, I found that. So when I was doing over the air only, and I had a TiVo box with two tuners, mm-hmm. I was running out of tuners, especially on the night that the CW had Arrow and a couple other shows that I wanted to record. For the fifteen dollars a month, I can't. A for the non-technical people in the household, um, and I'm not talking about Christopher. Um, <laughs> the one that you're searing that, that yes. pizza with. I, I can't I can't replace things with an Xbox. I can't replace things always with, with a different strange device. The, the, the TiVo box is, for all intents and purposes, a cable box with, with a much nicer interface than anything Comcast would provide you. Yeah. So this, to me, is nice. And also, and I think we've talked about it before, when you start recording over the air... And they start monitoring what you're doing in the guide. Mm-hmm. It then starts recommending things that are on Netflix, on Amazon, on so on all starts, those other services. That starts influencing the rest of the stuff. So, so huh. it, the, the and the thing that I that that I think's always been tough, and I know there's been a couple aggregators and different different websites that have tracked what's coming on Netflix, what's going off Netflix. TiVo has that kind of down to a science. And bases it on what you're already watching. So you got to be a big. Uh, so if you're a big fan of that type of service, this is worth it to you. And you you want something to DVR over the air. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's the quality when you hit four tuners? When you hit four tuners, it's 1080p Dolby Digital. Oh, that's okay. That is, the other, <laughs> that is the other side. Yeah. If you want the best HD possible. Over the air is the best thing mm-hmm. you're going to do. I don't know what the compression is doing on a TiVo. I imagine it's, it's pretty good. There's, you don't even there's notice. no compression. But how about the recording? You know, it, yeah. it, 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 it has to do some whatever format they're using. It's not a. Straight I'll tell you what. It's not the. It's not the MPE- MPEG two that I used to have on my Direct TV box, <laughs> and and it's not and it's not like the MP, M like one of the other MPEGs that that is not MPEG four that I was getting on the Comcast box that I had. It is yeah. much cleaner than that. So I remember, I remember. Well, one, anytime watching Monday Night Raw on Comcast, even Verizon, sometimes it messed up. When you start hitting those fireworks spots, mm-hmm. it, you just watch your screen bandwidth crush under well, that. The, the other place I've seen it, and, and I'm not a huge football fan, and I know being from Pittsburgh, people are probably going to boo and shame me, but I'm not a huge football hey, fan. You know what? I'm actually taking the year off sports. Okay. I'm only interested in sports entertainment right now. But I will tell you. One of the best things to test your HD quality is to throw on football on Sunday and look mm-hmm. at the blades of grass. I, you know if, what? If that's... you see MPEG digital blocking, the only reason for the longest time I was watching football, <laughs> football is because like this is something awesome in HD, and I want to be able to use my TV to the fullest extent. Right. Boom. You know, especially when I, after I went over the air because yeah. you. Uh, I work in video, so I noticed the difference yeah. more or less. And and I mean the TiVo we've used. For when people are over doing a slideshow or Pandora running in the background, mm-hmm. it's it's just it's the interface that your when your parents are over or your grandparents are over, you, you can hand them the remote and they they uh, there's a guide button, and there it's the same interface that it's very close to the same interface that that you're used to seeing. The interesting thing too though is TiVo actually their guide is high def. So if you've seen a lot of the Comcast guides that are that looks like a step up from ASCII, mm-hmm. their TiVo has their guide in high def. FiOS is nice. Yeah, FiOS is get FiOS has gotten a lot better since two to three years ago. Mm-hmm. Now I'm running I'm running the cable card um, in my TiVo and using it to get FiOS in one of the in two rooms because um, FiOS accidentally sent me two cable cards, so Oops. I have an extra. Um, but ne- I mean, I, I'm so far I, I cannot, I, I will honestly say I will go back to cord cutting before I will leave the TiVo box. Wow. Like there is no way I'm 
I have yet to see someone else's service with the bells and whistles of what TiVo offers. Now, yeah, you are paying. You're paying that $15 a month service. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say if you really want to bite the bullet, and after, and I think I'm actually going to convert all my TiVos at income tax return time to lifetime memberships. Um, I think it's a like a $400 fee, but that is you have a TiVo lifetime membership. There's no more monthly charge. You can use it forever. I'd be interested in that. So you're technically like paying off the box, the subsidy yeah. on the box. You're paying off everything, and it's just your device unlocked forever, and you have does, lifetime does guide. Does, does, does TiVo have WWE Network? I don't know. That's one thing I'd have to find out. That I don't Cause know. Because I'm in the I'm in that point where I'm like, well, everything's on Chromecast except for WWE Network, and if I bought something on Amazon or, or Amazon Prime, uh, then I have to boot up that loud, loud, loud Xbox 360. Um, and that kind of drives me nuts. But you have to have another device. See, and I, this is my mm -hmm. problem with Chromecast. You have, so on Tuesdays and Thursdays, when Carl and I go to work, there are no devices left in the house and Carla's mom's there Oh, to babysit. So okay. what, and I can't, I'm sorry, I can't hand her a spare. I, I do have spare Android devices laying around the house. I, I, I can't hand her that. She just won't uh, No. So, so Chromecast doesn't fill the, the closest I could come to that would be something like an Apple TV or maybe a Roku. I feel very fortunate that all of our parents have iPhones at this point. Yeah. So they would actually know what to do with that. Yeah. yeah well, she's still on a flip. Yeah. Hey, we got an update from Doug in the chat room. Um, he says, uh, uh, well, first, uh, Hulu Plus is a nutsack. Uh, I've been happy with so far with my over the air selections. Netflix has been amazing, but Hulu I'm not sold on, but waiting until after the next TV season happens. I tell you what, you know, I've said this before, uh, but, uh, Hulu is still referred to by my wife as the DVR. Okay. What's on the DVR, which is what show has come on that we haven't watched yet. That is ready to watch just like we used to use the DVR. Um, really, that's what that service is for. Um, if, if you have a TiVo, no, you don't need Hulu Plus. You won't miss it. Um, I like, yes, you're paying for the ability for it to be on TV. Yes, I actually deactivated Hulu Plus for the last month because I realized the only thing I'm watching on it is SmackDown, Daily Show, Colbert at midnight, and all stuff that I'm usually watching while I'm working at my desk with, I have computers. That's not a problem. Um, but I don't have to put it on my tablet which is what it's required for, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and even to the point, I Chromecast down to the studio computer, and I've been pulling up SmackDown on the TV upstairs. So you can Chromecast from the Chrome browser, and it'll let you do Hulu on the, on the yep. Chromecast on yep. the TV. Now, I don't, part of me doesn't want to do that for everything else. Like when we have a bunch of stuff coming up in Hulu, because mm -hmm. it's like a, I got a team viewer in, I can't have Missy, you know, remoting into the computer and having to deal with that. She's not going to use it, mm -hmm. you know. So I really pay for the simplicity at that point. And the fact that you can go back and see some full seasons if you need to. I think she caught up on most of Doctor Who through Hulu Plus originally, maybe. Um, and, and it does kind of fill in the gap some stuff that Netflix doesn't have, just like Prime does. Um, so Dirt is saying that the same TV he finds on Hulu Plus, he also finds on Netflix, but at least on Netflix it's commercial exactly. free. Mostly, Yes. Mostly yes, but that's not that's not the film. A couple of movies, movies are different too. They had Ghostbusters on when nobody else did. Okay, that, that was a win for me. Yeah, and, it's and, not a lot. It's but it's enough to make it worth keeping on. Again, it's that convenience. If you have a DVR, you won't miss Hulu Plus. If you don't, then you kind of like it. Plus, I like the exclusives. I, I'm liking um, all the British stuff they brought over. Uh, the End Game, which I think was actually Canadian, Misfits stuff like that. Whites was a good one. Um, the new stuff with awesome, the awesomes, uh, quick draw. I love the first season. I hear the second one's pretty good too. Uh, so, which again, most of that stuff you can catch in the browser anyways, mm -hmm. but I just like to be able to still just click on and pop it on my Chromecast or my Xbox, you know, or Roku or something. So it really, I am just paying for convenience at that point. So but. awesome. John, did you come up with anything? <laughs> Here's what I'm thinking. This is awesome that I'm on this program tonight because <laughs> literally five minutes before I came to sit down and sign on, the Verizon lady was knocking at my door <laughs> wanting to know if I want to switch from Comcast to Verizon because they just dug our dirt up for the last month and a half. And 
inconvenience us and want to sell us Verizon, I think I'm just going to call the three of you over for a pizza and beer party. And <laughs> we'll come all up. up a yes. bunch of machines and you can tell me how to do all this stuff. And, and then the only problem is, is that you'll all be stuck from my technical support calls at three o'clock in the morning <laughs> when something doesn't work. <laughs> so that is, that's what I think is awesome at this point is like, wow, I really, I need to free myself from these cable guys and, uh, I, I, I absolutely despise them. And, um, <laughs> so, and you're giving me an out. I like that. So that's awesome to me right now. Awesome timing. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. I have kind of an experiential uh, awesome thing of the week myself uh, as well. Uh, I found that my mother-in-law is becoming um, uh, trained and certified in tearing down iPhones and replacing parts. <laughs> she works in at a Batteries Plus out in California. Okay. Um, and apparently that's something they do. And she's going to know how to replace screens, batteries, all kinds of stuff. There's, I'm trying to think of who what I, I ordered a replacement 4s screen off of Amazon and whoever it came from and I can't remember the company's name whoever it came from they actually have a slip in with the screen replacement kit now keep in mind it comes with all the screwdrivers all the parts and the screen to replace your broken screen mm -hmm. and the instructions and it says if you don't want to do this yourself, you can go on their website and you can find people in your area that are certified for screen replacement. Mm -hmm. And then at the at the very bottom in the fine print, it says, if you want to become a certified screen replacement person, also go to the website and you can learn how. The, this is a new market. Like, I know this is something that popped up that, like, I think people, one, are starting, like, home businesses doing this mm -hmm. and doing quite well at it. Uh, there's a You Break It. You break it, I fix it. That just opened in Mount Lebanon. There's a few around town. It's one opening up in the old Castarasta on Brookline or on Broadway. Okay. Really? So yeah, what that, that Castarasta or whatever moved two doors down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I think it was something else. There was and they put in show. some kind of computer. It's not a you break you break it, I fix it, but no. it's a screen replacement type place. Well, they they got that that kind of stuff too. It's a I know it's a bilingual computer place okay because they have a banner actually up in the grocery store at the top of the hill and i was reading it trying i'm like <laughs> these words don't match these words so do we have different computer problems for the mexican speaking here the spanish speaking here like you know i, I was just trying to figure that and i didn't have my google glass to try to translate it so <laughs> which there was um, an update for today you know what yesterday I put on my glass in like three weeks i just I just can't bring myself to do it. I I, I don't want to go in a book and deal with it, you know? Are you, mm -hmm. are you bored with it, or did you get I, chastised, or what I happened? I don't know. Well, I what I'm worried about being chastised, because uh, now there's all that bad press out there, and, and like it's worse than a year ago, you know? Um, and I just, like, put it on, and I get tweets, and that's like seems to be all there is to it, you know? See, I, I'm waiting for it to hit, like, a 50% mark, and I would pick one up. Mm -hmm. It's the, it's the price point. Oh, big time! That's the hard swallow big for me time. right now. Big I time. should lease it off you. You could lease yeah. it to me on a weekly basis, and and I, maybe I, we could stretch the lease out, and then you could you could borrow it back if you needed it. But I would pay a weekly charge to use the Google Glass. You know, I'm not opposed because I could use I could I mean there are so many instances at both work and at home mm -hmm. that I think. Oh, it would be so nice to have something like Google Glass right now. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, it'd be so nice to have fifteen hundred dollars in my pocket right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's one of those things where if it came down in price point, like if they could cut, if they could shave fifty percent off the price of that device, mm -hmm. I would have no issue using it. So was it seven, it. about seven hundred? Seven hundred bucks, yeah. six seven hundred bucks. I would pick it up in a heartbeat. But then you, you're going to get the. One where you attach the glasses, it's a bit more. Well, I think I would be okay with probably doing something a little more. Well, I'd probably do, I probably would do something where I attach it to the glasses. Because mm -hmm. I already have, I already have, I need to get another pair of glasses, and mm -hmm. I have my backup pair to these, because these are starting to scratch and just you know, get old. You zip tie it like mm -hmm. I did. Yeah. But, I mean, I could, I could move to my backup pair for these, because I like them. Mm -hmm. And then I could go for... A 
a framed pair for glass. I might have to go for it a little bit again. I, you know, I just I, I get in spurts where it's like, no, I'm going to wear them for a week, see if see if there's they, what they've updated. I actually, was getting frustrated because some of the updates really slowed it to a crawl. Okay, and it just was unusable for a couple weeks there. So that that just frustrated the hell out of me. Yeah. But a lot of times it's like hot days. You don't want the extra weight on your face mm-hmm. too. So. The researcher in me really wants to take me and you out one day, separate days, with us both wearing the glass to see the reactions that we get being male versus female. That could be fun. That would be interesting. Yeah, the reason I really what would the like perception is. Yeah. Okay. Whether it would be, you know, I, I, I mean, I could guess what I what the reactions would be, but I think it would be very interesting. We may have to do this where we go out, we'll go the same exact place, the same time of day, and mm-hmm. just have somebody else watch us and see the reactions. Hmm. To see if it's a difference between a guy versus a girl wearing glass. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> got the wheels turning now. Uh, anyways, uh, and uh, you got an app of the week here. Yes, I, I do. You were playing with this before. Yes, I was. This is fancy. It's 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 a new Instagram app. Um, it's from Instagram, and um, how many times I can do this? Come on, friend. You know it's really screwing me up. This is a total side note between my iPhone and my Samsung tablet because the whole trying to get all the screens to pop up, you know, the lineup of the screens, and I double tap here, but I hold here on the home buttons, the main buttons, Mm -hmm. to get things to pop up. It's really screwing with my head some days. Um, Just throwing that out there. Uh, But it's Hyperlapse is the new app. And what it does for you is it gives you a time lapse of whatever you'd like to take a time lapse video of. And it gets rid of the jumpiness, the, the bumps, the shakes, the, the unsteadiness, the stable. It fixes a lot of stability issues. Mm-hmm. The bleeps, the creeps, and the sweeps. Yeah. So it looks like it's you. Then we talked about, like we, we, we talked about before. Um, like, did they beat, did they beat Microsoft <laughs> to actually? No, I think they're doing something a little less techy. Yeah, here. this is very. I think, I feel like they're simply just taking a bunch of stills and putting them together mm-hmm. from the looks of these as opposed to the algorithm for the microsoft uh hyperlapse i think it was called what's this one called hyperlapse hyperlapse, this one's hyperlapse. i think the other one was called hyperlapse too dun, dun, dun. anyways um but that one actually like figured out where things were in a 3d space and would take away extra pictures based on that you know like mm-hmm. you stopped if you stopped at, at, at a light waiting across the street, you had a bunch of pictures or video just stacked up of one thing, right? Mm-hmm. It was it would just blow through that and make it look like, it, like you were moving the entire time. So, mm-hmm. um, so I think I think this is like the halfway point to that. Mm-hmm. You know, a low end thing we can do in our phone now. Yeah. You know, as opposed to taking a GoPro or a Google Glass and doing it. But but, but the but the, and here's my problem with things like GoPro that. The, scr- the the video quality isn't as high as you're going to get on a lot of your smartphone devices. Really? With a GoPro? Yeah, from from some of the stuff of GoPro, like in low light and, and things like that, it's just, it's like the lens just isn't there. It's also a super wide lens usually. Yeah. So this is interesting. So uh, th- this video we're looking at now, wow. It could be like just enough for most situations where it's okay. This is this is a fun app. This is now. Are you so with with their hyperlapse? Is there a time limit to the video? Can you kind of just go on forever? Is it, are you stuck with the what is it? Fifteen seconds or whatever? No, it's you can have on it's Instagram? a much longer period of time. I, I don't. I didn't catch the length on it that you were allowed, but we. I was playing with it earlier, and it was definitely longer than that. When you do shorter videos, it ends up looking like vines. Okay. <laughs> like another version of Vine, just sped up. Uh, you can speed it up or slow it down. Uh, you can't turn the camera around to face you, which is kind of a, a pain, I think, because I would love I a lot more selfies that. going. And I was trying to take videos of me eating pizza earlier, and it was difficult to eat. It could pizza. be fun to kind of move with, the, with you know, mm-hmm. kind of selfie style with the video moving behind you mm-hmm. a little bit. Uh, downloading it now. Uh, but um, I was playing with it earlier and Chilla watched me and I was just like, look at this, look at this and recording it. And it took so many of those skips out, even though it was purposely just obviously overdoing it yeah. with the shaking. But it was it was much clearer than if you would try to do this on your own. Nice. And nice. you could post it right to your Instagram or Facebook. Cool. And that's a big thing, like having tools like that that are going to connect, you know. Um, like I mean, well, I like the Street View one that connects right into your Google, or not the Street View. What was the internal Spear one that we were playing with last week? Oh, yeah. Um, 
something. We've already Photos. forgotten it. Photosphere. 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 Hey, it's actually right here. There it is. Still there. Um, cool. And this kind of adds on to that whole um, appification of the services, like how Facebook split and everything out. Here's another Instagram one, you mm -hmm. know. And it could take off. It could. And they could kill it in a while. Who knows? When I was looking it up on Twitter, there was a gentleman who part of his description was that he did these hyperlapse videos for events and you could hire him hmm. to create hyperlapse videos of your event or show. Mm -hmm. Why couldn't you just create it yourself? Well, I don't well, know. But <laughs> I guess from the point you can't, you can't you flip the around. camera. So yeah. You, Will you pay me to walk around and do <laughs> <laughs> stuff all day? I'm in. Wow. We're with future careers. Wow. Um, no, yeah, check it out. It's hyperlapse. It's on. Is it on both iPhone and just iPhone right just now? iPhone Free. right now. Yeah. Interesting that they're still developing there first. It's just easier. There's one device to worry about. Exactly. Or, well, not one device, but a there's very one limited. Ish, there's one ish, ish device, device to worry about. Yeah. yeah. There's, it's not as much of a. Uh, well, there, and I, I'll have to find the article. I'll find it for next week, and it showed, um, on the Android side. The, the number of Android blended hardware with operating system versions, I think two years ago, right before um, they announced, what was it, Jelly Bean, where they started to break out the apps from the OS so that you could get actual app updates and service updates without updating the entire OS. And then today, and it's, it's actually, it's continuing to get worse. It's not getting better, so... Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a toxic house stew over there in Android land. <laughs> they were right. <laughs> they are absolutely right. Hey, guys, uh, we'll get to some more stuff here in a second. Uh, first, I want to give a shout-out to Slice on Broadway. Of course, we got two in-studio guests. There they are. Yes. If you're on video. Uh, <laughs> I'm not holding pizza. Enjoy. Yeah, <laughs> someone go grab a pizza. Um, but, of course, they were provided here in-studio uh, uh, free uh, pizza, but to feed our guests so we can get more uh, coming in and that join us here every week uh, from our friends at Slice on Broadway right up here in Beachview in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. You can also check out their new location in Carnegie, PA, right on the main street. I know Doug's digging it because they're right, I think, down the road from an alehouse, he was saying on the Twitters. Maybe you can correct me in the chat room here. Uh, so uh, if you're ever in Pittsburgh or you ever come to Pittsburgh and uh, you're on the way from the airport, just hop off that Carnegie exit, go down Main Street, and you can find it. Some of the best stuff. A New, York, New Yorker approved, by the way. Um, and I, I love it. It's a it's an awesome neighborhood pizzeria, and they've been so good to us. So go support them and tell them you heard about them on the uh, Awesome Cast. So. Um, so I found this one app this week. I don't even know how I came across this. It's called Human. 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 It Human. puts people in your phone? It puts people in my phone. I, I don't know how they fit in there. Uh, but basically, this app is going to replace your phone app on your phone. Like, on your iPhone in particular. Um, I don't think there's an Android version. No, it's just the App Store right now. You can. I think you can sign up for the beta on Android, maybe. I think so. Yeah, if this I actually downloaded this, and it took me a little bit to find it. Because mm -hmm. I saw the article on it when it was brand new, but I have yet to set it up. So I still have to set up like some of the phone integration, mm -hmm. but it is really just kind of a nicer interface for your contacts. And it is going to show your missed calls. It is going to show your voicemails as well. Uh, let me see if I can pull up the show here. Make sure it's not going to show anything too sensitive. I actually did. Like I replaced like in the corner. I have the human app that looks like the phone instead of the green phone one. You actually can see it kind of above there. If you're on video, um, and it really kind of, I have my favorites that popped up, which you know are mostly friends and family, right? Um, but the cool thing is, one of the cool things you go in here, as I get text messages, and it brings everything up, and you can actually go in and I can verify my number with them. So if somebody else signs for signs up for Human, and they see my, they have my contact and it's an old number, mm -hmm. it will tell them, hey, that's an old number. Here's the new one. Ooh. It syncs up with, uh, uh, I think, LinkedIn, Facebook, you know, so it pulls all that information together. So a lot of people put their contact information in LinkedIn. Um, I'm trying to show this so that it won't. I don't know how to get out of this yet. So one thing that messes with me, though, like here I'm pulling up. That's supposed to be my sister. That's actually her son. 
<laughs> because it's her Facebook picture. Because it's picture. her Facebook picture. So <laughs> when when I get really angry at people that don't put themselves as their Facebook, this is why. <laughs> I have other friends that I know they have show posters, for instance, and that's what's going to come up as their contact picture. My wife is a cupcake, for um. instance. Um, so you can connect. You can connect your contacts, your calendar, mm -hmm. Facebook, Gmail, LinkedIn, and ex and if you use an Exchange server at work. Right now, it's That's telling me a lot me that of services. It's right now. It's telling me I have a meeting with John Chamberlain. And actually, this is not you. Dun, dun, dun. I'm pretty sure. So I want. So, and this is where services would probably start to get wise. Like you're talking about the Facebook picture issue. Mm -hmm. Letting you pick. Do you want to use the profile picture from Facebook, Google Plus, or LinkedIn? Obviously, LinkedIn's probably going to be your best bet if they're on there. If they're not on there, then falling back to some other this service. Is, uh, and that's pretty cool. And it is pulling everything together in it, like in a readable way. Like I can go on LinkedIn, I can look up people's stuff. I have another service called Refresh, mm -hmm. and like tonight, like I pulled up, it, it, you know, uh, it, when I have guests on, and I add them to my calendar, it'll say, "Hey, you're meeting with so and so. This is what's come up lately." Um, uh, let me know that John uploaded a bunch of videos to his YouTube, you know, and this is what this is doing as well. Like I pull up, like I pull up my sister. It tells me I, in a sentence, I work at Joy Cone and live in Greenville. You know, I know that obviously it's my mm -hmm. sister, but for somebody else that pops up that I don't know, that's a nice digestible way to find that stuff. You know, this interesting reformatting of all this information. Um, so who's going to buy them? So <laughs> this is I you think this is, this is a Google buy. If, you think it's a Google buy? I, I would I it makes sense with the Google, um, but I feel like also uh, Facebook would want to make a play for them too. Other cool thing, there's an ad button here. So if I'm at some kind of meeting, some kind of I'm you know I'm, I run into somebody, I meet somebody the first time, uh, uh, you can add the ad. It says uh, add contact on add contact. It says it's Tuesday night. I'm in Pittsburgh. It shows me where I am. It says never forget how you met. Right. So next time I meet somebody like at an open coffee club or something, I can plug their stuff in here and it'll let me know that I met them at the open coffee club down on Southside. And I think there's a, isn't there an internal search in the app where you can actually put that in there? Like if you're if you can't remember someone's name and you're somewhere, say you're a pod camp and there's someone you met at coffee club, you can actually type like in the search bar, like met at coffee like club. For instance, I, I, I plugged in pod camp. And it says works at PodCamp Pittsburgh, works at PodCamp PGH, people named PodCamp, which is a little weird. Um, <laughs> but no, that works out PodCamp Pittsburgh. I got Norm, Rob, and Mike Munns. Yeah. So, <laughs> which all apply because mm -hmm. they've mm -hmm. all worked with PodCamp. Um, so it's just because I've, your contacts are just like this giant hole mm -hmm. that things go into. And now that it's synced with my Facebook and my my Google contacts. It, it gets worse. It's got worse. I don't even know and, what's and in And what's weird too is, is I'm seeing is, is like I'm getting, when, when you have that unified contact, you either, you, you start to get duplicates. So mm -hmm. then you start to consolidate and then you consolidate and then somehow your phone picks, I'm going to store this phone local, or I'm going to store this contact locally on the phone, but I'm going to store this contact in your Gmail account, but I'm going to store mm -hmm. this contact as its default space in Facebook. Like, it, it's this, how do you actually figure out where the root of the contact is stored? And then how do you consolidate that? Like, I want I want all my contacts in, in backed up in one location mm -hmm. that isn't some backup on a computer. Like, in a cloud service. And, and hope, it'll be interesting to see, will they actually pull all of that data? And they're not just aggregating it and giving pointers to the sources. Are they actually giving a consolidated are they, contact? And are they are they basically like if I if I combine a Facebook contact for for like you and then your what I have in my phone contact and my Google one and I say wait no these are all the same thing. Will that just com combine them and distribute that across the board to all those? Yeah, so if one, I go to Facebook yeah. now, I just correct Facebook by by joining that together. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I've actually been uh, helping somebody consolidate their contacts on Apple Contacts, and it has Facebook joined in there. So I'm wondering, what does that do? Is that pushing them out? Like I know you can go. Let's see, I had it up here just so I can see kind of visually. So you can go to all contacts, and you're going to have. A jumbled. You're going to have a little bit fun. of a jumbled yeah. mess with that, right? Now, what you have to do, so here's the trick. So when you do that, 
on your device and you, you do the all contacts view and you have the duplicates, mm -hmm. you tap on one of the duplicates. And then I think down at the bottom of the contact, there's like a combine or something like that. Oh, there's a uh, link or it you, says link. Also, you're talking about Apple contacts. Yeah. Uh, you if can you select two there. I found the key command. I don't remember it, but it'll just converge them. Okay. Uh, on, the, on the on the device itself, you can open one and say link contact. Yeah, this I'm doing the on contact. the computer. Uh, John, do you have any uh, contact issue, contacts issue? How do you manage them? Yeah, it's horrible actually because I have I try to keep the Facebook personal Facebook with no contacts. What's you know I try not to link that at all, mm -hmm. and then uh, and so when I you know an idiot like me, so I sign onto my phone and I have a uh, I'm onto what is that Microsoft 365 that you know, supposed to share my or keep my contacts and documents in the cloud. And, but i constantly, when I take something out of my phone, I'm not, it doesn't necessarily come out of my contacts on my laptop. And, uh, and again, for an idiot like me, that's totally confusing at some point. And I have, so I probably have, I need some place that would consolidate them, mm -hmm. them, but I don't want to, every time I have an opportunity to consolidate out of Facebook or Twitter or something like even LinkedIn, I keep those all separate because I don't want the same people that I'm sort of contacts with on LinkedIn. I'm not contacts with on Facebook and, and I don't want to be, nor do I necessarily need them all in my phone at, at any particular time either. So it's actually quite confusing for a guy like me. <laughs> and, uh, and I sit there and I get frustrated. See, I know I had so-and-so's phone number in my phone two days ago, but somewhere along the way, I then mm. have to go look it up in an email somewhere and, and Unlike you guys, I can't find the root of the problem. I figure out like what is happening. So I go and I put it back in my phone, and you know, two weeks later, it's gone again or something. So, uh, but I, I yeah, it, the contacts. I but I do think no matter what I would have, I would never want to have anything that pulls all of my contacts into one sort one space for me because um, I, I don't want everybody mixed into my different devices. I have play devices and work devices. And mm -hmm. I'd rather not have them mixed. So you got you got a particular distinction you need to work with there. Yeah, absolutely, <clears throat> absolutely. Versus us, we're we're just kind of throwing everything in one pot at this point. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, you know, it seems like that's the simplest way, but it, once mm -hmm. it all gets into one pot, it's hard to find. It's hard to find. So it's a bigger pot, and I know you can search things, but the fact is, for me, it, again, uh, you know. It, for me, it's just much simpler to have three different silos of personal contacts, you know, contacts for the blog and then contacts for real business. All right. We do have a, uh, uh, you know, Lyft and Uber have been, well, well, I know there's been a controversy here in the city. I know there's, have, did they ever, did they determine whether they legalized them or is that still in the works around here in Pittsburgh? They both have temporary, I think, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, they're temporary, temporary. Yeah. While, they're, while they're sorting it out. So, um, actually, a friend of our show just out, uh, Walt Ribeiro, uh, that was on the show a couple weeks ago. Uh, he got, he, I saw this tweet, I, I, I had to share it. Uh, first lift experience equals flat tire, frowny oh, face. <laughs> and we got a picture here for you guys on video. Uh, really nice and awesome driver, though. Um, and I think, uh, Katie, you had uh, an Uber story. Yeah, you know, Uber and Lyft go back and forth. Um, I believe it was Uber who had the problem first, um, or I'm sorry, Lyft blamed Uber for setting up all these pickups that weren't real, so wasting all the driver's time. And now Uber, Lyft is accusing Uber of giving contractor burner phones and credit cards to create fake Lyft accounts and calling them brand ambassadors. So they were hired on as brand ambassadors. Meanwhile, they're just screwing each other back and forth. <laughs> they're playing dirty. Yes. Um, although, you know, I feel like I feel like that goes with it. I don't know if it's just like the preconceived notion of taxi drivers, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because it kind of felt like when the taxi drivers got pissed because these guys were moving in on their, their turf, um, it was like, well, provide a better service. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, it feels like it needed to be disrupted. It's been kind of around for a while mm -hmm. and it's not very good. Definitely not very good here in Pittsburgh. For instance, oh, definitely not. Um, definitely very scary in New York City. For instance, um, but you know, seeing that, yeah, this is this isn't good for anybody, especially as they're trying to get approved and get like the good favor uh, in towns like Pittsburgh here. And well, the the funny part I think is is that the yellow cabs of the world 
aren't technical enough to be able to mess with Uber or Lyft, but you have Lyft and Uber messing with each other enough to disrupt their own services. So, so I, I, I wonder, is it kind of creating a mess? Or are, are they creating a mess for themselves if they were to leave each other alone? I'm sure there's enough cab service to steal away for both of them. And you know this is some lower level guy who's mm-hmm. coming up with this idea. Where are they doing this? Is this like across the board or like over in San Francisco? I don't know. I've, I've heard of it happening everywhere. Yeah. Okay. But I haven't heard it being one city. I'll say that was- I think it'd be cool to sneak around at night and throw pink mustaches on all the taxis. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I wonder too. Like, why wouldn't why wouldn't a yellow so a yellow cab driver at least in pittsburgh they have to like lease their vehicle and they pay for that vehicle by the hour Mm -hmm. what keeps a yellow cab driver from also being like a lyft or uber operator like with their own car or like with the yellow cab i regulation most likely yeah i I would guess when he's also leasing the car so i'm sure the cab company wouldn't be too pleased with that what does the cab company if care? they track the mileage i guess and yeah because they're gonna have to take a fare but if you're picking up customers let's say you're on the south side and you pick up somebody just walking down the street then you have a fare there's no pre-call there's no there's also no hailing car- cabs and well i'm just saying overall if yeah. let's say you're it's the point you're a yellow cab maybe you have lyft and uber or, you know i'm a lyft or uber i'm signed up for it as a driver mm-hmm. but technically i'm a yellow cab driver mm-hmm. I could pick people up I see on Lyft or Uber. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, like, you I, could be very I, sneaky about this. I, like, I look at this as a this. This is a way everyone could take advantage of of all three services, mm-hmm. and there's definitely enough people or customers to go around. I mean, if when you hear about Lyft, Uber, and Yellow, mm-hmm. the complaint of Yellow is there's not enough cab and cab drivers, and, and Uber and Lyft are taken taken away their their customers well they're taking away their customers because there aren't enough cab drivers to begin with if you wanted to be like the entrepreneur of yellow (laughs) you could sign up for all the services and just start servicing everyone Hmm. and you know what i'm saying like or or why doesn't yellow which you would think would have a bigger back end and and resources to deal with this kind of stuff versus lyft and uber like it just just seems like there's there's more solution there's there's more than three solutions even to the problem so there a, so there's no reason for Uber and Lyft to be arguing over customers. Hmm. It seems to me that the yellows yellow cab guys would just let them to fight over the airport trips from downtown to airport let them run that and Uber runs around the city that seems you can't get a cab from one city point to another city point no, at all. No, uh, and uh, all they're interested in is that, in that long fare with the people that are going to tip great the business people. So let them do it. And but on a, on, a, on a Friday night from 10 to 2 a.m., how many people are going back and forth to the airport? Because the airport pretty much shuts down at like 11 o'clock. Right. Mm-hmm. right. So if there's, if there's a shortage of cabs at that point in time, then you can't say all those yellow cabs are going to and from the airport. So there's either a shortage of cab drivers and cabs. So I, like I said, I still don't, I don't, still and I don't know how many times I've heard just recently stories of people saying I waited for two hours and nobody came. Right. And somebody else came to ride. I don't think there's a minimum, you know, that, that they are required to have a minimum number of cabs on. So if the cab mm-hmm. driver leases the car and doesn't want to work, they don't want to work. So if they don't want to work Friday nights from 10 until 2, I don't think they have to. There's, as far as I know, there's no rule that requires a certain number of cabs, so, like you have right. buses. So there's no deployment. Like, they, nobody's really propagating, deploying properly to, to fill in all the well, gaps. And, and, like. I, and I've seen in other cities, too, where there ends up being more than one cab company. Mm-hmm. But I, I've heard in like Philadelphia there was like three or four cab companies, and I don't know if it's mismanagement or what. But you, all you do is over time see cab company A buying cab company B, C, and D, and they're actually the overall operator of all four cab companies, even though they have four different names. Mm-hmm. And, and I even saw I think there's a in the Pittsburgh area there's a Cranberry Cab Company. 
that used to service cranberry, but now it's like I saw one in town the other day, and it was weird because Cranberry Cab Company. I saw one on I seventy nine. That's funny you say that. I yeah, mean, and it says now servicing Pittsburgh. Wow. Oh, and also we have like the City Cab Company that that's supposed yeah. to be. Hey, we're actually going to service the city. We're not just going to be the, the corridor. Right. You know? So I I don't know. It's, I think there's many different solutions we could propose to this, and all of them would work out. There's no reason for Uber and Lyft to be fighting over, at least in the Pittsburgh area. I'm guessing I'm well, sure these issues are, are bigger in other Well, if you don't want to go outside and, and, and have somebody <laughs> drive you there, um, I might have a solution for you, Chilla. Okay. Um, it's called uh, The Sounds of Street View. <laughs> so they've apparently set up so you can go into Street View, and if you go one way... Uh, you know, according to the article, if you move in one spot, you'll hear pi pigeons cooing, while another spot, you'll uh, hear the sound of people clinking glasses as they dine. Um, the sounds are all short, looping clips, uh, so if you stay on one spot too long, you're going to notice. So it feels like if you're in, like, an interactive game, like how you get that loop kind of thing going on. But yeah, they've kind of applied it to locations here. Um, this is a new experience. It's in your web. It, it, it uses the Google Maps, like I said. Um, and they're re using sound recordings at places like, uh, some place I can't pronounce in France, uh, Hapuna Beach, Hawaii, and Balboa Park, San Diego, California. So, fun little thing. It'd be interesting if there was, like, a sporting, like, um, baseball, football field. That could be fun. Would, mm -hmm. would there be, like, a crowd cheering? Yay! Um, the, and it's actually open sourced. Um, the company behind the project is Italian uh, Italian hearing aid seller Amplifon. Hmm. Uh, and they've also opened up its code to GitHub so you, other developers can create sound maps for other places around the world. That's kind of cool. And it's in stereo too, as they're showing the, the kind of the spatula display here. So. Um, Another aspect to now, can I take that and add it to that photo spear that I put in the studio? That would be cool. There you go. It is open source, and it's all the it's all the it's all the opening clips to all your shows. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> all these welcome to awesome class, awesome cast stuff. Um, all right, uh, Showtime comes the Apple TV. Why is it a news item every time Apple TV gets one new thing? Because you know what? They keep adding stuff, and I have yet to see a lot of these things on Xbox One. Ooh. And, and I, I don't understand. I, from my understanding, I guess Apple has to contact you if they're interested in having <laughs> you on only? their box. So it's who, whatever like uh, Tim Cook is interested in watching, he wants to catch up on his Dexter, so he called up Showtime to get it on the Apple I, TV. I guess, but on the, on the flip side, you'd think Xbox would be begging people to get their service on the one, mm -hmm. especially when it's already available sometimes on the 360. Um, so I'm happy that Showtime's over there. Um, I don't know if is Showtime. Can you use it on the Chromecast? Is it uh, a castable app? I'm unaware because I don't have like the Showtime Go whatever. Because it's it not is a. It's, not, it's it's yeah. It's it's because I know when I tried Showtime on the iPad and tried mirroring it. Mm -hmm. And even tethering it, it said that it wasn't allowed to be mirrored or, or redisplayed. Like they have a block on it. Isn't Showtime Viacom? I don't know. That I don't know. So I'm happy it's on, on the box because that's just something I can put in another room and get the content without having to have a cable box or anything like that. It is not listed on the Chromecast apps page. So I imagine it would I'm be guessing, if it was. So yeah, I, I, I'm guessing not. not. So, that's a shame. So that means it's probably not on 360 either. I think it might be on 360. Just I think it might have stuff. just been added to 360, but it's still not on the Xbox One. Hmm. Subsidiary of CBS Corporation. Because they have the boxing like connected, and I think some of the UFC or something. So, um, Cool. We also got Chrome 64 finally hit a stable build for Windows. This has to be a chiller article. Yeah, well, yeah, mean, well and I put, while mean, it's stable as Chrome is on Windows. Does that mean this thing is going to run a little bit better? This it, sh uh, it should. So they're saying it's hit stable build. So you should see all of your Chrome browsers trying to update soon. 
which means we're probably a day or two away from a Mac build. So you should see you should see battery performance on your laptops and mobile devices. <laughs> it's so funny to look better. at your battery performance on a, on the Mac OS. Yeah, Chrome is the perpetrator every single time. And I edit in Final Cut. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you should see you should see some speed speed and multitasking open up on on your on your other devices as well hmm. i have to share this one thing um this goes along with the story that came out today amazon apparently is buying twitch and so and why confirmed. didn't uh, why didn't go- so go- they were saying google was in the running th- yes was- um i think they offered more money I, I, I haven't seen a reason i've heard i've heard speculated speculated reason that just i think amazon added a one to the number or something well, they're not uh, selling Fire Phones, so they just shy of one billion dollars. People with Twitch. That's weird. It, they've already killed off Justin TV. They've killed off. You can no longer archive your stream on Twitch. That's weird to me. Are they archiving it though? I don't know, but that seems like. Uh, and I agree with the, conver- I, I, the conversation on this. I think I heard on uh, uh, Daily Tech News Show today. Um, but I, I tend to agree with the idea that they're killing that off so they don't have to deal with copyrights. It's one thing to stream something, but it's another thing to have actually retain that. Are we, are we talking talk, taxis in the chat room? Yeah, I was just reading that. All right, we'll catch up with that in a second. Sorry. But I wanted to, I, I lost some time the other night. Of course, we, there's Twitch Plays Pokemon where everybody in a giant chat room uh, presses a button or, or types a button or something like that from a Game Boy controller, and they're playing Pokemon as a giant crowdsourced thing, right? Are you ready for the next wave in this? I give you Fish playing Street Fighter. Oh, I did see a, a clip of this. I lost like five minutes watching this. The other night, um, basically, uh, for those not on video, there's a fish tank here, and they actually have drawn off like a tic-tac-toe quadrants thing. So like one is forward, one's backwards, one is forwards plus a button, uh, backwards plus a button, and, and, and different combinations of buttons as the fish move from one area to another. And depending on which fish is in an area, I don't know how they rigged this. Um, you would think it would be more than one fish tank. Well, the and both, the both fish one. are in the same tank. So as they go, I was watching a Ryu versus Blanca, and it took them like five minutes like for that little sliver of Ryu to get beat by the fish. Um, yeah. Well, <laughs> so it, it's, not, it, it's not the fish versus the computer, and it's not... It's fish versus fish. It's fish versus fish in the same tank. In oh. the same tank. <laughs> Two fish, one tank. <laughs> <laughs> and it's as exciting as you'd expect. It's actually quite, it's actually about as exciting as uh, the, the Pokemon one. Because uh, it, rather than just having a stream of chats of everybody going nuts, pressing up, down, B, A, or, or democracy or whatever, you know, because democracy was so, like, the people that touch the most of one button that's what one instead of like mm-hmm. whatever button was in the chat room as it went um yeah you start cheering go f- <laughs> start cheering for the fish to go the other side of the tank <laughs> so um so i present to you your newest uh, sporting event on twitch and this is why they just got bought for nearly a billion dollars hmm. there you go nobody here watches twitch right i have yet to my, find a reason my brother actually started let's play videos but that's youtube more Mm -hmm. i think um but that's the thing that's the the kids watch other people play well that's what that's what i and i think you have a point there the kids nowadays that i mean they're watching people with their recorded minecraft Mm -hmm. stuff and i mean i was watching uh that's what's gonna kill cable tv when uh when i had labs at pti last year uh when the kids were like done or procrastinating or whatever they were watching playthrough videos you know not like just playthrough videos, you know, just seeing how, what they're doing, getting strategies, first person shooters mostly. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's what they're gravitating towards. And there's so much access to that to right now, access to that right now, um, that it just kind of makes sense if you're in that video game mindset, I guess. So I can see it. I can see it. I mean, I, how many times did I reread a Nintendo Power back in the day? 
you know, when I was like video games, hold, you know, the holy mm-hmm. crap, you know. Uh, John, do you have any thoughts on, on, on Twitch getting bought? Man, I don't have a clue. That shows you how out of date I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still focusing on the Verizon lady. <laughs> no, I'm, just I'm just kidding. I was actually looking at the article as you were talking about it. It's, uh, it's just amazing stuff. That uh, how much I think you're right though, as far as uh, Chilla, as far as that's investment in the future at that point, because if the kids are using it, that's what they're going to gravitate to. That's what they're going to know when they're in their 20s mm-hmm. and 30s. There's no doubt about it. That's future there. And also remember, uh, this, this uh, I was again reminded to on the podcast today, um, uh, Amazon has a game studio that they put together mostly for that Fire TV, mm-hmm. and I, I presume for their, their tablets as well to a point too. But there could definitely be a little bit of a synergy between those, you know. Maybe you get a free Twitch account with Prime. <laughs> does does the Fire TV do pass through, or is it just a standalone box? I don't think it does pass through. I don't think so. Um, it, yeah, because it's just it's that basically that Android box that we looked at too. Yeah. So uh, with that, hey, just because uh, John has got this really creepy look going on on his video right now, <laughs> I know it's got this. I'm in a. Uh, I'm in a room without a lamp so i'm like oh so i had to exercise my technology and turn my iphone flashlight on <laughs> at least at least your front light uh, uh, john I, uh, katie's got something that i think you and i are familiar with because we both went through scare house last year together um That's right. yeah. i mean you, you didn't hold me too tight through that so so i appreciated <laughs> that so um but uh, uh that just has something about what's coming up there new teaser trailer yes i don't know if you've watched it yet it's amazing i had chills Oh, yeah? Yeah, amazing. So this is for the new... This is for the summoning. This is our new haunt. Mm-hmm. And um, it's it's unreal. It is just absolutely unreal. I I, I know I, I built these rooms. I could tell you what went into each of these rooms, and it still scares the heck out of me watching this video. <laughs> I know these people. I work with these people. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I know that was always... Uh, you know, a friend of ours, Veronica, went in and did some photography in there a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, on, you know, what used to be, I guess, the Forsaken. Mm -hmm. And, you know, talked about how much detail goes into that place Mm -hmm. uh, that you don't see in the dark, you know. She got to go in, you know, with the light and a flash and and, and actually see see everything. It's a lot that goes into that place. Yeah, it's it's taken us months, and we're still not, summoning is not officially done yet, and it's it's amazing and how much more there's still to do and how how long we've been working on it and how many different paint techniques and building and, and just putting the props in and, and, and just I, I had no idea how much went into something like this until this year and mm-hmm. character design and, and I think it's gonna blow everybody away it, it's unlike anything I've ever seen as far as just it's like movie set quality when nice. you walk in there you're just gonna be blown away and and we got the sounds that was one of the things we just got was there was a few of the sounds for the different rooms and it's just it's a amazingly creepy vibe <laughs> and it's yeah you guys have to come back and see us again oh yeah absolutely the uh, so I have a question for you on development side. Uh-huh. Do you do you develop all year long, or do you wait until one's over and then develop, or does development go along while one's already being one's currently being executed? It, multiple, usually at once. It's this one. There's a, like with the zombies, it's blackout this year. So we actually were changing two haunts, hmm. and technically Creepos is getting some changes, even though it's not a huge change. But you're going to notice some set changes with Creepos. So a lot of these things are all going on congruently where we're trying to think of something different, trying to do something different, rebuilding this set and trying to figure out how this set and, and even uh, um, the way the haunts were set up, some of the where you, Forsaken was here and Zombies is here is now Summoning is here and Zombies is over here. So even just that kind of rebuilding these walls and these floor layouts are just insane and, and trying to work with each haunt and hmm. it's it's awesome. And like I said, a lot of it goes on all at the same time, all year long because a lot of people are like, oh, Scarehouse, you're open. Like, no... And that's and that's really nice for uh, you know for frequent visitors like because I know like after a few years it's like you know Forsaken like mm-hmm. I pretty much knew the layout of Forsaken yeah. I'm like okay here's the thing and there's that thing and oh that's a little different you know mm-hmm. but but and, and even Creepos I kind of remember from when it was like the rave version yeah you know Delirium. Um, mm-hmm. you know just kind of like a theme new paintings awesome paintings mm-hmm. um, you know and, and you kind of see that uh, even zombies a bit right mm-hmm. so I'm glad to see that like a little bit gets changed in there. Um, it's a really fun experience, and and yes, I have vowed to partake in the basement this year. 
Sassahat. No, don't do it. Yeah, you both have to go. You can go together. <laughs> there you go. We can do that. There you go. <laughs> I've heard so much about it this year. And 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 I know I'm not spoiled because it's just going to be completely different, anyways. Yeah, it's it's a totally different experience from every every time it's a basement. It's a different experience, and, mm-hmm. and different things go on, and occasionally you get new people down there, and we're scary. <laughs> <laughs> awesome! So go check that out. It's uh, scarehouse.com, right? Mm-hmm. And, September nineteenth uh, already. And if you are, uh, uh, I know they they had a crazy time with it last year. Uh, but you need to pre buy actually and schedule for mm-hmm. the basement. Yeah, because it's a like a so many people at a time mm-hmm. it's not like the walkthrough you might run into people you know uh like it is upstairs uh so uh get on that if uh you're making your plans i know i have limited weekend availability myself so i'm going to start sorting that out <laughs> uh it's 10 minutes from downtown pittsburgh so go check them out scarehouse.com so john you jag off thanks for joining us well thanks for having me i uh yeah, like I said, it took me 45 minutes to sign on to an hour-long show. So that's fine. <laughs> but you know, I learn every, I learn more than I than I uh, than just sitting around watching a pirate game. So I'm glad I was on. I appreciate you having me on. No problem. He's a yajagoff.com. Anything cool co- coming up there? Uh, you know what? Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow we have our first of three interviews with Billy Gardell from Mike and Mall, and uh, so we're running a video of that. So it should be good. It is awesome. good, and a great a great interview recently with um, uh, Mayor Bill, Badu- Bill Peduto. Oh, thanks. Yeah, he was actually really kind. We thought we had an hour to shoot with him, and we ended up with twenty two minutes. And uh, and, he, and he he made good on it. He was really good. And we have a big project coming up in uh, a couple of weeks, and we're going to announce, and he's going to get one hundred percent behind it. So uh, so that's a good thing. So, nice. Yeah, he's a good guy. Looking good guy. forward to it. At K Dutters on the Twitters. You can run into our scare house here in about a month. <laughs> no, you don't want to run into me. <laughs> <laughs> At Shilla on the Twitters. That's me. I'm, I'm typing in title options. Okay. <laughs> We've got a few out of that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, 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 all the announcements are coming up here beginning of June. Yeah, or no, I think, I September. Think what we... month is it? I'm so September. confused right now. We? We're still in August. Where am I? <laughs> um, we'll be, I think, on the September 9th episode, which is two episodes away. Is that correct? Am I wrong? I'm probably wrong. That seems right. No, two mm-hmm. two episodes. Because we got uh, next week, we are scheduled to have Rob on the run. You may know him from Vine. Ah. Is going to be on the show. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and then the week after that, uh, we're looking to get, uh, hopefully, AJ and Uncle Crappy will be back for iPhone announcement. So in between next week and the week after, I think you're going to have an uh, Asus smartwatch announcement. Motorola is going to make an announcement. I think they're actually going to show off the final version of their Moto watch and it might release. Okay. And you're going to have the Apple announcement. So I think it'll be it'll be interesting. Yep. Is AT and T next worth it? Uh, what's the which one's that? Is that the it's one of those like you, you you can get a new phone and pay, I don't know you get a new phone like, you can and get you a pay new phone every like year or six months. It's or pretty much like you, that. you pay you're you're paying what you used to pay with a subsidy. Okay, but then when your when your time comes up, so you have one of two options: your time comes up and your bill actually reduces because mm-hmm. you're off the subsidy, or you can turn that phone in and get the new phone and just. I'm keep like. Paying. Kind of it depends on what they announce. Like maybe I'll experiment with it if I like what the, what they announce on the new iPhone. Yeah, it'll, it, it, I think it'll be interesting because I, I I think we're gonna be I think we're gonna get stuck in some kind of weird. Remember when they went from the spring releases to the fall releases? Mm-hmm. So you had that that time when like there was two devices that kind of came out. What well the phone was delayed right well yeah so you had a lag but then the tablet you got two of them yeah that year yeah I almost I'm wondering if you're not gonna see a phone and a tablet in the fall and a different phone and tablet in the spring and what happens if they just keep up that momentum <laughs> so maybe they do the six now and the S in the uh, spring. Or what happens if they do different? the six now and yeah the six yeah so what happens if every year is a new number is a new number and then every spring is the S line when well, here's my question is so how I I think what you're gonna see in the difference is 
The spring release will be the same thing as the fall release with a bigger screen. Hmm. But then what you'll see in the spring is the uh, an updated chipset to be able to then power the bigger Their screen. screen. Mm-hmm. Huh. That's a guess. Huh. That's me throwing a dart at the, the board. and Intriguing. Yeah, because this next iPhone's the uh, Android size iPhones. Yeah, it's the 4 7. Yeah. And then the 5. What, 5 5? Five? 5, yeah, something like that. I, I want, think that's a little too I big. really don't want a bigger phone. No. I'm not interested. I'm with you. I like <laughs> this small thing. It goes right in the pocket. Really. I, wish, I wish they would go back and give me a 4S, 4 4S line size phone. Tiny people have big phones. Have you noticed this? <laughs> like, little ladies have. Big phone. That's because I can't see. Not, I'm not talking about like little old ladies. I'm just like <laughs> little women. Little, I don't want to say little girls, but just like tiny people have big phones, and I don't get it. I maybe it's like it. maybe it's like big people owning a big screen TV. The tiny people, it's like carrying their own big screen around. In their <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Somebody help me with that. Um, just something I've noticed recently. Anyways, with that, hey, it's the Awesome Cast. Uh, we're at awesomecast.com, at awesomecast on Twitter, awesomecast on the Facebook, on the Google Plus. We're at live.sorgatronmedia.com. I think we also have live.awesomecast.com. Goes to the same place every Tuesday at 6:30 p.m. Eastern time. You can hit us up at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com with your emails. And uh, big thanks, big shout outs, big ups to our friend Mike Allen. <laughs> Raising the roof over there. Uh, at Mike Allen PR on the Twitter for helping us out with notes and tweets all all night long. Two fish, one tank. Yeah, that All night happen. long. Two fish, one tank. <laughs> you walked right into Thank that. Thank you to our awesome chat room. Oh, wait, wait, real, real quick. Uh, what was that update? Uh, <laughs> Doug called yellow on a Thursday night for a ride to Southside and was told 15 minutes. Guy never showed. Calls me six hours later and asks if I still needed a ride. I think that... Tell, it, it demonstrates entirely. Uh, say, yeah. Uh, Teaspoon is obsessed with watching people play Mario Kart on the YouTubes. Yeah, I would be too. So, uh, so with that, thanks to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience, and thanks to our awesome guests. Have an awesome week. <laughs>